In fact, while we're on the business of making zones, I don't think that the best place for the camel is the clay. <laughs> Six by five room in the mountain. So let's give the camel uh, and probably the water buffalo, who I imagine is going to come down here soon if he hasn't already, um, a place to be upstairs. So I'm going to push shift and left pointy arrow to go back up to the surface again. Ah, oh, the water buffalo is on his way down. Oh, the snow's melting. And now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make a zone again in the same way that we did before. I'm going to push I and I am going to... Do I do it like this? Let me just check this real quick. Yes, I do. I do do it like this. Okay. I'm just I'm just tabbing through various pages of notes. Okay, so we push I to create a zone, and we create a zone much like we did before. Except we want this zone to be big. We want it to be like 10 by 10. So I'm going to push enter to start. And then I'm going to use that trick that I talked about earlier. Where I'm going to hold down shift. And push right to move 10 squares in that direction. And then I'm going to. Still holding down shift. Push down and move 10 squares in this direction. We've got a big fucking area here. As you can see. Look at that. And we're going to designate this a pen or a pasture. Like this. And then we're going to say who we actually want to be kept in this pen or this pasture so that they can, you know, w wander around and, and graze and, and eat all the food to their heart's content. I accidentally killed a horse like this once. I decided that the, the, the whatever settings I'd set up had convinced this horse that the best place to be was deep underground. And that was not the best place for the horse. So I'm going to push, um, I'm going to push capital N to set pen or pasture information. So shift N. Now we can see all the animals that we have. In Dwarf Fortress, sometimes the game lets you scroll with the arrow keys, and sometimes it doesn't. The times that it does this are sometimes clear and sometimes they're strange. But another, the, the kind of the second way that Dwarf Fortress likes to let you scroll is using the plus and minus keys at the top row of your keyboard. I would get used to scrolling like this in some circumstances because Dwarf Fortress loves to have you do it occasionally. Um, this loops so I can push minus to go to the bottom rather than tapping all the way down with with plus. Um, dogs and cats don't need pasturing. They're dogs and cats. But the water buffalo does. So I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to push enter. Now it has been assigned here. And I'm going to go down to the stray two-humped camel, and I'm going to push enter there. And now the dwarves will, like, lead these animals up to the pasture and get them grazing. I do this now early so that I don't accidentally kill a water buffalo and a camel, like I accidentally killed the horse that one time. We can back out of this with escape. And uh, our dwarves will bring these animals up. While we're here, I do want to learn about this camel and this water buffalo. Because cause <laughs> I'm very curious. So we, I pushed K, and I'm pushing Enter on Stray Water Buffalo. A large mammalian herbivore is powerfully built and has long curved horns. Her hair is black, her skin is dark tan, her eyes are black. She's a very black water buffalo. Like a sort of a, a, sort of a, a, a shadow water buffalo. It's cool as hell. Uh, now I'm going to push Shift and Right and learn about this camel. Uh, this is another one of these windows where I'm using plus and minus to scroll. A large long neck creature, very muscular. Her hair is tan, her skin is copper, her eyes are black. So we just got an incredibly beefy camel. Um, which is great. So they're going to get led up there. And while they get led up there, um, I'm going to get our dwarves to dig out another room. So we're going to escape, and we're going to push D for designate. And let's get a uh, build a doorway by pushing enter twice. And then I want you to build me quite a big room, dwarves. Like this big. Yeah, that looks great. Get to work. Because while all of our dwarves have gone down into the clay fortress, um, they, oh, they <laughs> should just, I'm pushing shift and, and right, 
no, sorry, uh, left pointy bracket to show you these animals being coming out, folks. Coming out, extremely <laughs> beefy camel. Go up to the pasture, extremely beefy camel on regular water buffalo, very black water buffalo. Oh, well, back to the clay fortress. Okay. They've left all their stuff from the wagon kind of just up there. Um, which is fine right now, but in future, oh, a snowstorm has come. We don't super need to worry about that. It's just good to know that we just put our camel and our water buffalo out there. Um, but what we need to make is a stockpile. We basically need to say to the dwarves, look, folks, get all of your stuff and put it in the clay fortress. Otherwise, someone's going to nick it. We make a stockpile. Um... We make a stockpile with its own menu, the stockpiles menu, which is P for put everything in a stockpile. And uh, we uh, choose what we want to be in the stockpile. These can be very broad things, you know, animal. I want a furniture stockpile. I want a corpse stockpile, you know, a corpse stockpile. I want a stone stockpile, a gem stockpile, a cloth stockpile, an ammo stockpile, a finished goods stockpile. Weapons, armor, food, coins, refuse, wood, bar slash block, <laughs> leather, or sheets. Um, but because this is kind of going to be like our all-purpose starter stockpile, we're going to want to go into a custom stockpile and set up some custom settings. So I'm going to push C to set it to custom stockpile, and then T to go to custom settings. And now we pretty much get to choose what we want. Do I want animals. I'm using the quick start guide for this, um, but this is sort of just general broad strokes of what you want in a regular stockpile. Hell yeah, we want animals. If we get any toads or toad men or giant toads or worms or worm men or blue jays or blue jay men or giant blue jays or cardinals or cardinal men or giant cardinals or grackles or grackle men or giant grackles or orioles or oriole men or giant orioles or red winged blackbirds or really any of this. This is where they go. The fuck is a thrip? <laughs> Animals in dwarf. Ticks! Tick, men! Who's that dwarf who loves ticks? Well, if we get any, here's where they go. We want food. I'm pushing E to enable these. We want furniture. We don't want corpses. This is not a good place to put your corpses, dwarves. We don't want refuse. We don't want stone, because we're going to start mining stone out soon, and if the dwarves just fill this room with stone, that, that's not good. Do you want ammo? Do you want coins? Do you want bars and blocks? You don't want gems? I think we'll get into that in a bit. We don't want finished goods? Oh no, we do, sorry. We do want finished goods. We do want leather. We do want cloth. We don't want wood. We're going to build a kind of unique wood stockpile in a bit. We do want weapons and trap components, we do want armor, and we do want sheets. Once we've selected these, we can back out, and if you see, if we go back into that menu again with T for, for um, whoops, with T for custom settings, you see it's it's kept all of our, all of our settings, so that's good. Now we designate it just like we're designating kind of any room, we make sure we're on C, we hit enter to start, and then enter to finish, and the dwarves will kind of like lay what my mind always thinks is a tarpaulin down, but it clearly isn't. Um, here. And now, the dwarves are... <laughs> the dwarves are gonna fucking leap to action, because there is nothing a dwarf loves more than carrying something from one place to another place, unless it's the object that you really want them to carry. I'm gonna push, uh, space, and we'll just kinda let the dwarves go for a bit. Dwarves, go for it. There they go. There they go, leaving... Leaving, I pushed K, uh, and then enter. Leaving uh, a grey-eyed dog. And a cerulean-eyed dog. Just to keep, just to keep, <laughs> just to guard this single block of Gabbro, which is some kind of stone. I'm gonna leave it here so we can see the dwarves come back down with all the stuff that they're carrying. It's it, one of my favorite things in Dwarf Fortress is, are those pants? Oh no, it's a crutch. Okay, I, th I thought they were pants. 
um, is seeing the fortress kind of humming away, is seeing the dwarves going and getting things, bringing various things around. Um, they got all the bits and pieces and they're fucking bringing them in. It's great. Nice work, dwarves. I'm going to play for about 10 more minutes, I think, and then I'm going to call it. Uh, I'm going to pause. Well, I don't need to pause. They're, they're carrying stuff. i got to check my notes. Okay, so we've made a stockpile for all the stuff we like and we want. Now we're going to make one for all the stuff that we don't like. You know, refuse and corpses. We're going to want this to be kept on the... Oh, there they go. They're, they're doing all that stuff. We're going to want to have this kept on the surface because um, dwarves don't like it when things rot or when, um, you know, dead bodies or dead bits of animal or, you know, that stuff is close to them. Um, I'm similar. Uh, the dwarves specifically don't like this because rotting things produce a, 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 a foul miasma, um, that, that permeates around the fortress, and the miasma is, like, actually dangerous. Um, I like this because it's kind of like the dwarves' rudimentary understanding of disease and how disease spreads, um, through this miasma, which is, you know, of course how, um, for a long time people thought diseases actually spread. Um, but in this case, there is a very real miasma, and it's 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 a real problem. So we're going to get the dwarves to make a refuse stockpile. This doesn't need to be super big, but we're going to do it just like we made the other stockpile. We're going to put a P for stockpiles. And we're just going to go up here and go for R for refuse. We don't need to be complicated about this. We don't want your garbo. Uh, let's not put that near where the pasture is. <laughs> let's put it down here. Um, let's make this, like... 5x5 five five or 6x6. Six six. Yeah, that looks fine. Let me just check that the... Yeah, that's fantastic. So, if the dwarves have any refuse, this might be like bones from things they've hunted or bones from rats that the cats have caught. Um, they'll bring it out here and then and they'll put it out there. And that's, that's, that's good. Before I finish, I want to set up a little farm. So if you're playing Dwarf Fortress along with me, you can, uh, you know, set up a little farm too. Farming is very important. The dwarves need to drink beer or wine, uh, really any kind of alcohol, kind of all the time. Otherwise they get cranky. They'll drink water, but they won't work very well if they are um, not drinking alcohol. Um... Farming is also going to be an important source of food. Dwarves generally just eat food, um, you know, as they find it. You don't necessarily need to cook. I'll talk about cooking, you know, next stream or the stream after. But for the moment, we don't need to worry because and you see these barrels in the top of the of the screen here. The dwarves have, um, you know, they, they've brought food with them on the trip and they'll be able to eat food there for a, for a good bit. I think I'm going to dig out another corridor and make this corridor my... I'm pushing D for designate and D for mine. Um, and I'm going to make this corridor my kind of, like, farming uh, area. My farms don't need to be super big. Oops. Um, right now. That's fine. And so long as we build this on clay and we don't, you know, hit stone at this point, it's fine to be to be considering, you know, uh, thinking of building on clay at this point. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we've immediately hit stone. So that's fine. I'm going to get the dwarves to <laughs> dig out an area um, down here. No, I'm not. Um, I'm going to just... Whoops. I'm going to... D for designate, X for cancel designation. Let's cancel this. D for mine again. I'm going to get them to dig up here. I don't want to put a farm up here. This is very close to my stockpile. This doesn't have like major concerns, but just in terms of like picturing what goes where in my fortress. I'm going to make this room bigger. Um, you know, I want a farming corridor, but the fucking... We hit stone. That's fine. Can always use more space. 
I love the dwarves. <laughs> Finish digging out. More gabbro, a rock that I don't know what it is. I'm gonna look up what gabbro is on Twitter after I've done this. I wanna see what this rock is. Um, everyone's hanging out. They've moved all the stuff downstairs. We have no refuse. They're just, they're just hanging out. If they're thirsty, they'll go and get a drink. If they're hungry, um, they'll go and get some food. We've struck citrine, which seems good. Um, oh, while the dwarves are mining this out, I want to show you something real quick. Let's turn off Dwarf Fortress on this screen and go back to Dwarf Therapist, which has been open this whole time. If we hit read here, it basically is going to refresh uh, Dwarf Fortress. And this shows us what our dwarves are up to. You'll notice that uh, Bear, our miner, has gotten better at mining, which is great. Geshad, who had no mining skill at all in the past, I'm not putting any tooltips up, it's fine, uh, has gotten to level two, that's great. More importantly, we can see what the dwarves are doing right now. These shovels here indicate that Bear and Geshad are digging, and everybody else is idling. They're just, they're just hanging out. Um, if we'd looked at this when they were dragging stuff to the stockpile, it would have shown that they were hauling stuff. Using Dwarf Therapist like this is a really good way to get a sense of what your dwarves are doing at any given moment, especially when you start getting to a bigger fortress. Alright, let's go back over to the fortress and see how mining's happened. Ooh, they finished digging out that area and there was some cool stuff. Is that the citrine that they were talking about? I've paused the game and I've hit K to look at stuff. Yeah, these are the citrines. Hell yeah! And what are you digging out? Ah, oh, they dug out the other space. Dwarves, thank you. So we're gonna build a farm. Um, we're gonna build a farm in this clay room here. Farms need soil to build on. You can't build a farm. Uh, people who know Dwarf Fortress will will uh, quickly think you can build a farm on on stone, Jack. It's complicated, and for the purposes of this, we're going to build on uh, on soil, um, which can be clay, it can be loam, it can be sand, it can be soil, anything that isn't, you know, like stone. The dwarves will take a good shot at um, building a farm on. We can also build a farm on the surface where there's plenty of soil, but that's a bit, like I said earlier, that, that's a bit dangerous because you don't want your dwarves to get killed by a bear or by a giant tick or something while they're farming. Except one of the dwarves would be like, hell yeah, look at that, it's expanding. We're going to want to go in here and we're going to want to hit B for building, our first shot at building. And there's fucking tons of stuff like this. And really, you do not want to worry or panic about it right now. We're just going to hit P to build a farm plot. Now... Farm plots, you would hope, would work a bit like designations, where we could kind of draw them out with a cursor, but that's not the case. Unfortunately, we have to use U, M, and K, H to, like, plot out an area. I'll show you what I mean. If I hit M here, or if I hit U, you'll see that, like, I'm building, like, a like a little Tetris piece that fits in here or whatever. Uh, we obviously can't build it there, because that's a wall. Um, and I'm going to use K and H to build outward to make like a little three by three plot. You can make this plot as big as you want, but I think three by three is a good place to start for now. We're gonna put some extra farms in there in a bit. You're gonna hit enter to place it. And now this farm plot has been kind of um, readied for construction and a dwarf is gonna come and construct this farm plot. Let's go into Dwarf Therapist real quick and see who we have on farming. Farming. Where is farming? Here it is. We have Adil, Adil Thobatek on farming. Um, but while we're there, let's get someone else on farming. Let's get um, Ingiz on farming. So we hit this button to designate them, it turns blue, and then we hit this button here to be like, do that, Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> and we can go back to Dwarf Fortress. Who's? And uh, if we let this run, someone will go and build that farm. Oh yeah, look, there they go. Who's this? This is Ingus, this is our, our farmer. And the farm plot has been constructed. You can see it's no longer flashing and Ingus is kind of like, I'm done with it. That's, I'm done with it. Now we are going to uh, introduce a kind of a new contextual key, which is Q. And Q is a key for um, 
uh, like setting tasks for buildings. If we want to tell a carpentry workshop to make a lot of chairs, we'll use Q. If we want to tell a farm what we want it to grow, we'll also use Q. So we hit Q and we get a cursor and we can move this around and you can see that Q kind of snaps to the nearest thing. We can change our stockpile settings here. We can set what we want to plant in our farm. And what we want to plant in our farm are plump helmets. <laughs> plump helmets are a primo dwarf starter crop. They're excellent. Plump helmets. You can cook them. You can brew them. Dwarfs think the taste of them is adequate. They grow all year round. So it's going to be plump helmet season from here on out, baby. Do we have... Oh, here's the other great thing about plump helmets. When you harvest them, they make many, many seeds. Uh, which you can use to make more pl plump helmets. That's farming. Um... We're going to use the irritating uh, scrolling uh, with plus and minus here to select plump helmets. We don't have enough plump helmet seeds, I don't think, for a full 3x3 three three farm, but we will really soon. So that's fine. We're going to hit enter to select them. And if I move off this, you'll see that plump helmets is the one that's been highlighted. At the bottom of the screen, you might see that we have spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And right now, spring is highlighted. That's because we're selecting plump helmets to grow in the spring season. And because it's plump helmet, plump helmet time in the clay fortress, we're also going to set them to grow in all the other seasons. So we're going to hit B for summer. Scroll down. Plump helmets, baby. C for autumn. Scroll down. Dwarves know what it is. D for winter. Scroll down. It's great. Great to eat and great to have. Not at all boring. And if we go through, we can check to see A. There they are. B. There they are. C, there they are. D, there they are. Now, this is useful for, you know, if you want to have crops lie fallow during a season or, you know, change in some way, change what you're uh, growing in summer to what you're growing in winter. That's, you know, how this is useful. Um, and now if we hit uh, escape, the dwarves will start planting that. They'll go and you can see they're doing it now. They're going and fetching these little seeds and they're bringing it over to the farm. While we're here, I want to show you real quick how you can see what a dwarf is carrying. You can push um, V for view units, and it'll snap to the nearest dwarf. You see, it shows what job they're doing here as well. You see it says plant seeds at the top. They're planting seeds. But we can also hit I on this dwarf, Ingers, to see their inventory. They're wearing pigtail trousers. That's a lot of pigtails. They're wearing a giant cave spider silk dress on their upper body. They're wearing a lion leather robe, a pigtail coat, a llama wool cap, a cave spider silk hood, a one humped camel leather left glove, and a mitten. They're wearing llama wool socks. And at the bottom, we can see that they are hauling a plump helmet spawn. That's how we see what the dwarves are carrying kind of through this menu. We can back out of it with escape. So the way I did that again was I pushed Q to look at Sorry, I'm, that's not right. I pushed V to look at nearby units. Uh, and then I selected their inventory with I. Um, it's showing me their inventory right now um, because uh, that's that's uh, the, the last thing we kind of looked at there. I think I can get back to the... No, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, G for general is what we saw when we arrived with them. Um, and then I for inventory. Okay. So they're carrying this over here and we can see them start to plant it. I think I'm going to call it there for this kind of preparatory stream. What we went over was we went over how to download Dwarf Fortress, how to get it set up, how to generate a world and then choose an embark. Oh, the dwarves are eating. Choose an embark point in that world. Um, you see these kind of gradient squares on our farm? That indicates that, that, that it has been planted, um, that there's something growing there. Um, we learned how to move the camera around and move up and down Z levels. We learned how to dig and we dug a big hole into this clay fortress. Uh, we learned how to dig down. We dug out kind of some preliminary rooms. We built stockpiles and assigned jobs, meeting spaces and refuse stockpiles using Dwarf Therapist and, uh, you know, the game itself. And we dug out a room and we planted a little plump helmet farm in there. Um, there's a lot more to show, um, but uh, there should be enough here to kind of 
get you going if you want to start playing Dwarf Fortress. Um, and hopefully uh, I can come back and show you some more stuff uh, to do. Because there's a lot there's a lot more to do to kind of get this fortress set up and running. Uh, the, these dwarves are sleeping on the ground right now. You can see it's a Z above them. And that's not what we want for our dwarves. Um, but we've kind of got a little start, a little start going. Um, so you want to hit escape. And you want to hit save game. Retire the fortress is like... Goodbye, I want nothing to do with the fortress. Abandon the fortress to ruin is like, the fortress is done. Um, we don't want either of those. We want save game. This sometimes takes a while, but again, it was on my Mac when I did it, so. Saving world information. thinking about it it's gonna play that big guitar sting when it's done that 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 intro guitar sting that gets me every time it did it and my computer also made a sound for some reason I oh I know why my computer made that sound uh, dwarf therapist went a fort has not been loaded please reconnect when dwarf fortress has been started and a fort has been loaded because dwarf therapist doesn't know what to do now um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it there for the time being. Um, this has been Dwarf Fortress, the histories of greed and resourcefulness, a Dwarf Fortress starter stream. Um, my name is Jack the Key. You can find me on Twitter at NotQuiteReal. Um, if you see me kind of posting about Dwarf Fortress there, that'll be with the fortress that I'm working with on my Mac. I have a thread where I ask people for help with Dwarf Fortress, um, and I try and share the answers as I get them. Um, other than that, I would love to do this again. Um, I'd love to kind of uh, go over the next steps and, and begin to turn uh, the fortress into something something kind of special. Um, if you have any questions about what I've done um, today uh, and you're new to the game, please uh, message me on Twitter. If you have any uh, complaints about what I did today because you're a veteran of the game, um, Please message me on Twitter. Alright. Have a good night, everybody. I will see you soon. Bye, bye, bye.